All right, guys, I just want to do a quick demo for you. We're just going to talk a little bit more about shapes. Some of you guys on your projects are getting really a little crazy, okay? What I mean by that is that you're going, you're picking these really uh, hard subject matter, Viking ships, all this stuff, right? Some people have like things like multiple wings and, and just simplify, go simple. If you're having a hard time with this, just start with a simple shape. A lot of times when I draw sometimes, I, I do silhouettes to figure out a design, but sometimes I start with just a basic shape. I just come in here like this, and I just start sketching a shape. I don't know where I'm necessarily going to go. This is usually how I even work with character design. I start up, and then I start getting shapes that come together, and I start seeing other shapes that might exist in those shapes. And then I, I'm always drawing through and figuring out, and then I start to look at that and go, hey, you know what? that starts to feel like it might be a, some type of a robotic shape and there could be like some type of missiles or something there, a little hose. And then I start piecing other elements together and all of a sudden I start coming up with something that makes sense, okay? So you can take that approach if you want. I was trying to teach you guys the structure of working stuff out and this is what's important about part of the structure is, is that having what I call this dedicated um, it's basically our perspective box, but what you'll notice is a lot of artists in the industry, whenever I draw in my sketchbook, whether it's a, a monster face or a vehicle, one of the first things I do, I'm going to do this on two layers for you, is this. As I sort of lightly come in and I make what I call my T, like this. That's it. And then what I, I do is I come back about right here and I sort of make the other half of my T real quick. Okay, see that? Right there, and that T is actually this. Let me draw on the rest of this. That T is actually a box with a center line. Hold on. I made a little mistake there. Okay, so if I come in here, Finish this guy up real quick, All right? Do you see if I take this down, there's a magic of layers, right? See that? Does that make sense? So that's a lot of times when I do that T, I put that T in my drawing for a purpose because it's a marker for me as a center line. And then what I can do is I automatically sort of make this connection between there and there. So when I start to draw, so let me, let's say I'm going to add another layer here. Let's say I'm going to draw a monster face. This is how, first thing I do in my sketchbook is I put that, you can always see that little T, and then I come in there and I start doing this. And I'm always thinking, okay, if that's the center line and it hits there, then my center line is going to come over, it's going to come down here, maybe his jaw comes back here, maybe he has some type of bony protrusions that are here that come forward like this, so now if I come back on this side, it's going to be like, you know, right about in here. And then I just keep sketching from here. And I figure out, but see, I already have structure now. I have a center line that's going down the center of my guy here that's coming down to there. Do you see how I have that center line? The rest of it now is just adding on. So let's say my guy's got a big shark head and he's got a fin that pops out here. Well, I need to come over here, draw a dotted line, bring it back over to the other side. And then I can come over here and I can figure out where that fin shape is going to exist on that side. See how I did that? And now I could come over here and I could start to sketch out how part of that, oops, I don't know what I just did there. Uh, hold on a minute, I know what I did, I turned on symmetry and I didn't mean to. There we go. So now I come back on this side and I can start sketching out what that fin, see how I got that fin? Okay, there, that little, not fin, little alien thing that's sticking out there. So then I come back down in here. So now the rest is sort of detail, right? I have, look at the shapes that I have. Let me do, a, do a, a quick draw over that really quick in red here. Look at that. Okay, that's just a very squashed cylinder. This is half of a sphere. You see that? This is that same cylinder on the other side. It's coming over right here. Okay. This right here is just a simple wedge, okay? Then from my wedge, I drew another wedge. And then I came from here and put two cylinders on each side of that wedge, so to speak, like that, okay? But when I take that away, this is the shape that I have. Now the rest of this is just detailing. If I decide I want to come over here and put, oops, I want to put an indication right here for an eyeball, 
like this. Because I'm now going to come in here and put an eye. Let's say I'm gonna, he's going to have like three eyes. Like that. He's an alien, right? That means on the other side, here's my center line, right? So that's going to come down to here. That means on the other side, am I going to get to see his eyeballs? No, because they're wrapping around. I might see a small indication like that. That's all I have to put. Okay. So now the rest is just sort of detail. If I come in here and I put all this stuff in here, let's say I come down in here. I was giving him some type of a weird funky mouth. Let's say I know where the center line is. Let's say I want to have a lower jaw right here. And he's going to have two sharp teeth that are coming up from that jaw. That's the center line there. Come to the other side. That's going to be the other tooth right in there. Okay. And now I need to tie all this back somehow. I have this, he has this long jaw, this weird, weird eyeball looking shape, and I need to come back and find a way. Maybe he's like some type of a, that head feels like it could be a head on like a large beast or something, right? So I might just bring the back of the neck back like this, and I might just curve this back to here and then just end it like that. I'm not going to draw the body now. I'm just sketching a head shape. But if you look at this, now if I come in here, the rest of it's detail. That's me coming in here and starting to carve out and putting some exterior detail, thick and thin contour line to wrap the shape. You know, maybe there's a little bit of a bump in that tusk. Um, wrapping some uh, ideas of like skin folds that might be around part of that tusk. Where would I get skin fold ideas? Well, when you look at teeth, our teeth, we have gums that wrap over. So if he has this thing that protrudes outward, then I come up to the top. I do this, say I want to put a, like a horn thing up here. I'm going to make some type of a skin fold up there. And then I can start to make a little horn that might come out of the base of his head that's wrapping through here like that. And the rest of it is just the detail. Look, I have a shape that comes up here. It might dip in there and then it wraps over. See that? I could wrap it with contour line now. He might have little pattern details. This is where your reference is going to come in and is key. If I start looking at reference of, of snakes or reptiles, I can incorporate part of their skin structure. I like that idea. Maybe as he's like, maybe that's his nose right here. His nose is up above, right, like that. And then at his nose maybe pops out a little bit like so. And then he has these sort of reptilian shapes that come off of that and sort of break out along the front there. And then the rest of it, again, like I said, it's just, I'm just defining up the shape, wrapping it with rubber bands, contour line maybe he has a little bit of this guy lives like a little bit in the, some type of forest so he might have some hair that comes off him the rest of this is just detail he has a low neck but you see how I just created a base skull or head for my animal and this is the neck part I'm gonna worry about the body later I can do body sketches but what's important about that is when I take that away do you see what I still have I still have that center line there. Do you see how important that center line is? It allows me to come in here and it allows me to say, hey, if that's the center, this line recedes back. Oh, look at what that happened to hit. It hit the center line for the neck. And then if I bring that up at an angle, that hits right there. The other center line there. Do you see that? There are dedicated center lines on my whole entire little beast head. So it doesn't matter if I'm drawing a beast head well, that sounds funny. A beast head, All right? Well, I, mean, I actually sort of like that guy because he's got these cool little features. He has a little tusk that pops out here, a little here. You know, I, I could come in here really to find some of this. He's got some cool shapes that look different that I haven't really seen before. And then I can get down into here and I can get into specifics, right? So what are, what are some more specifics that might happen? Well, this is where you have to look at your anatomy and have a background in some type of animal or human anatomy. I know what do we have as humans? We have a sternoid mastoid muscle that connects right here to the base, uh, the back of the jaw pretty much up here along your neck and it comes down here to the center by your clavicle. So I could come up here and be like, okay, here's the base of the skull. So I'm going to give him a sternoid mastoid muscle and just sort of pop it in there. And maybe, uh, I have a little bit of a bump there for the other one. So, um, and then maybe I stretch out part of the muscle, and then I'm just going to put some lines on it like this just to give it some shape, okay? I can give them a little Adam's apple like in here. I can mimic what I know about anatomy, you know, and then I could change it a little bit. So I might decide to come over here and be like, okay, now this is where I'd get in the body. I might decide to put like big deltoids on them, 
can connect those up to a, a biceps, whatever it, whatever else I want to continue with. I might have a, you know, a little bit of a, I could put a, maybe he's got a huge clavicle neck bone that comes in here. Then this all connects. Whatever it is, that's later on. But what I'm getting at right now is that when I look at this character I've started sketching, I have a dedicated shape that exists on a series of basic spheres that I'm drawing out of my head that exists like that. It's shape. I'm just drawing on top of the shape. And then that's how I create my funky looking character. Okay, everything from this point is just fun exploration. So if I was going to develop this guy more, now that I did the head, I would go do some body sketches, silhouette studies. I would push my shapes and see where I end up. I try to pick that strong head shape right there. I am immediately thinking he might be something that might be like rhino based, maybe hippopotamus based body. Maybe he's part hippo, part elephant blended together with that type of a skull. And he's a beast that walks around on a planet that's used like a horse, right? Because he doesn't necessarily feel too threatening. But he has these large tusks that maybe he's, you know, for, maybe it's for eating papaya trees. I don't know. Whatever it might be, you just have fun with it. So if I strip all this off, I'm back down to my key center lines again, right? So if I come back over here and if I add another line to this, say I want to start this time with the center line of a ship. So if I come in here, let's do this really lightly. Let me grab the, the light red here, okay? So if I come in here with the red... And I'm just going to say, I'm just going to throw a shape in here. Boom, like that. Okay? Now my shape goes past that a little bit. Oh, no. What do I do? Well, why don't I just extend my center lines out a little bit more? Okay? So I'm going to come back here to my center line. I'm going to go back over here. Let's go to blue. Watch. And extend that. That. Why is it not drawing? Hold on a minute. Nope. Hold on. I have the wrong layer. Sorry, guys, I zoned out there. That was my box. Here's the layer. So now if I come back here and I just extend this out a little bit like this, and I just raise it. See how I just did that? I just extended out the center line of the ship. Now I can start curving the ship onto both sides. But remember, what what is that little T that I have there exists inside that. I've just drawn the center line in there. Scott Robertson's, Scott Robertson's book that he had that he just came out, he talks about this with how he's doing his automotive design principles. It, it's the same principle. It doesn't matter if you're doing automotive, if I'm drawing a, some type of a weird flying vehicle, a creature skull, anything. I'm thinking about this. This is how I'm starting my progression, is I have center lines and I have part of my perspective already figured out. I can come in here now, and I know that this line right here is going to be pretty close. It's going to be something about like right there. Okay? So now I could come in. All right, let's go back up here to our red line. Now I'm going to come in here and start curving out some ship shape real quick. So I need to get some thickness in there. All I have is like a center line as if I had cut a hot piece of butter. So let's do that. Let's say I came over here. Let's say I just did this right now. Let's just come over here to about the center and just draw a line outward and then draw another line out this way. And let's just say I decide to connect, okay, from the front here to this side. Like that. And then I'm just going to round this up to the top right here. Maybe I slope it down a little bit like that. Okay? There. I have one side, right? So now I have to figure out the other side. Remember when I taught you guys, we talked about proportional division real quick? Okay, look. I can measure off of these lines right in here. Do you see this line that's going right here? I'm going to come up right above, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to recede this back, and I'm going to come in here. Draw a line going that way. Now, that curve I put in there is a little bit off. That's okay. I can erase it a little bit. It's no big deal. That's off because I didn't have anything measured. So what do I know right now is I know that line is coming off of this center right here. Okay? So let's talk about real quick, not to confuse you, let's just jump over and look at proportional division. What did proportional division tell me? Well, it told me that if I come in here from a plane view and if I have myself a square... And I want to figure out how that square is going, how far. Now, in one point, in a plain view like this, I could just measure the distance from there to there and move it across, right? That's correct. What I could also do is I could split it like so. And then I bring that middle point. Sorry, my ruler's a teeny bit off there. That's okay. It's just working digitally. And if I bring a line through right there, if I connect from this corner here, through that middle section there, where it hits down here will be the next exact distance of my square. Okay? So, 
that's how I figure out this line over here on the other side. Okay, so here, let me do that on another layer real quick. This is where I'm going to do this in another color. It can be a little bit confusing, right? So I'm going from right here, okay? Let me match this up. Technically, I'm going from right here to there. Even though it's the curves up a little bit, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to bring out a little square like this. I'm going to bring a square like that, right? I'm going to go corner to corner, boom, corner to corner, boom. Follow the middle section to there. Connect from that middle end here through that middle end there. And where it hit right there, that's exactly my wing on the other side. Now it looks confusing because I'm starting to get a lot of lines on there, but now I could drop that layer off, see? All I need to know is I'm going to touch the layer. Um, which layer did I have? Sorry, I'm going to delete my little... No, no. Or it feels drawing on too many layers here. There it is. Now I'm, I'm on my ship layer here. What I can do is, why don't we start labeling real quick? I know that. So I'm going to hit, let's come over here. Um, uh, usually I write it in, but I'll just type in ship. Okay? And there, that's it. Okay, so now that labels, did it label it? Yeah, there it is, it's ship for me, okay? So I know I'm going to touch right there that that's where that fin ends right there, okay? And now I can come back over here and I can drop down that box I put in. Now I know how far the fin goes on the other side. So now it's just connect the dots, right? That line there, so now I'm going to connect from here to here. So I'm just going to come over here and connect to there, right? And then look at the curve. The curve came to here. So now here's where I could get really technical and I could figure out, like, if my curve starts right here, I could drop and I could find that box shape from there to here. And then I could cross that over in proportional division and find out. But you know what? I'm just going to eyeball it right now. I have a pretty good estimation that where this comes, see it comes up a little bit like so. This is going to come. I'm going to draw through the shape here. It's going to drop down. I'm just looking at the other shape that I have and it's going to come up right about there. You see that? That's how I just figured out the other side there. I had to use proportional division to get to the other side. If you, oops, that's what I hate about drawing on a Cintiq is that you have to get that right angle. You guys have the Cintiqs that spin. This guy doesn't. So now I figured out that shape. Does that make sense? Right? I drew through to the other side. Okay? So now let's just continue this. Let's say I wanted to put some type of a body on the back, right? I have a center line. That center line is really key for me right there. Because now I could come in here and I could say, hey, I'm just going to simplify this and put a sphere, I mean, excuse me, a cylinder shape back in here. I'm just going to lightly sketch in here my cylinder. And I'm just going to bring it back here. And where it hits right here on that other line, that's the same line as what's down there, right? I'm just going to come back in here. There we go. That's my cylinder right there, okay? Now, I'm, I'm just going to curve the cylinder a little bit. I'm going to come here and round off from that edge so I have a smooth surface. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's put a center line in there. Going back, I might bring it and then curve from that line. Bring it down a little bit like this, okay? And then here's that connection point underneath, right? This is why drawing through the shape is so important. Now, if I bring this line back, and connect, I know exactly where that line's going. People that don't draw through the shape won't do that. They'll come over and they'll do that. Well, it's totally off. It's not going that way. It's going back here to the center of the ship. That totally changes that angle right there. So I'm going to come back and then just bring it to there. Boom. There, it's nothing complex. It's just a cylinder shape, right? And now if I come back and look... Sorry, guys, I'm starting to get too many layers here, but I didn't want to delete any in case I want to go back to something. Uh, where's my red line? So that's my little box. So I know it gets confusing when you have all those lines in there. But look, now I take away my ship. So look, I actually had it on the same. Look, let me go to red. Here's my center line now for that box. Do you see that? It comes in there, drops back down, comes in about right there, and connects from there to right there. That's the center line for that, okay? But I don't even need to put that in right now. I can just see it. I can feel it, okay? This, the object looks tangible at a point. It looks like I can pick it up or grab it. It's making sense to me. The only thing I haven't done is this. 
on this little sketch here, okay, is that you see how I put that curve shape going back? I didn't put that line on here. So if that line's going to come here and then curve this way, that means if I come over and, and take my ruler and I find that plot that point, which is right about there, see to right there? Now if I come back in blue, that means right about here it's going to come back here and it's going to curve like that. Now that makes sense. Now it's matching both sides. Okay, so let's talk real quick about putting a fin on. Let's say I want to put some type of a base fin. Okay, let's, one thing I like to talk about is the basics of the front of a house. Okay, when we look at the front of the house, what do we see? We have a roof. In order to really figure out the apex or the center of that roof line, what do we need to do? We have to understand where the center is. How do we know where the center is? We have to cross the front view of our house. So if I come over here and I cross the front view of my house, and I take that line and I follow it right up the middle, all I have to decide right now is how tall do I want my roof to be. That's it. So let's say I put my roof to right there. I'm now going to draw a line down this way. And now I'm going to draw a line down this way. How do I know where to end? Well, I could come over here, and if I draw a horizontal line where that hits, now I know that that has to come to the same place. It's the same thickness, and that's my roof line. Okay? That's in what I call a plane view. That's our front orthographic view. So if that has to translate to perspective now, Bear with me. I'm not trying to confuse you on the translation here. I'm just trying to give you an idea that if I come over here, give me a second, and if I translate this right now in perspective, let's say I put it, I'm going to put it in two point. I have to do the same thing. I have to cross it, find the center, come up, and then I find that apex line there. Not really apex line, but you understand what I'm... There. Okay, and now I draw it. The only difference is, is now I have convergence happening. Okay, so why am I getting at that? Why? You see this part right here? Imagine if I erase this right here. Here's the answer to your fins. Do you see that right there? Does that make sense? Your fins converge to a center line somewhere. Aha, that's key. So now watch. Now I'm going to erase what's there. And I'm going to come in. I'm going to put a fin. Okay. So let's come back here. Well, let me think of a good place to put a fin. Actually, let's, let's go right here. Let's say we wanted to have a fin that's going to protrude out in this direction right here. Okay. So let's do that real quick. So what I'm going to do right now... First thing, I'm going to put my fin right here. I want to know what that shape is right there. So what I'm going to do very quickly is I'm just going to draw a line wrapping the shape. And I have a little bit of a curve on the, that shape. It sort of bows down here, so it's going to wrap up around. Maybe come up a little bit like that, sort of like that. Okay, that's fine, right? Where I made that mark right here, there's the center. I now have to find that mark on the other side, don't I? to know where the fin's going to be, okay? So I'm going to draw my fin from here to here. I'm going to make a little oval shaped right here, okay? So now I need to put that on the other side. Well, didn't I just, we just talked about proportional division, right? If I draw this right here, cross this, cross that, I find the middle, I connect from that corner through that middle right there, Okay, and if I come back over here now and draw from that line and recede this back, oops, I got a little crooked there. Recede that back, where it comes back and hits right here is going to be the start of my next fin. Does that make sense? I figured out, so this shape right here is going to be starting right there. And how do I know how far it goes back? Because I just draw a line from here across, receding back to that vanishing point. So I know that that's going to be my fin shape on the other side. The only thing I don't know is the angle that I of my fins, like I had the angle of the roof. Well, now I could do this. Look, I have figured out the hard parts right now of where the fin's going to be. It's the angle at which the fin comes. So to do that, 
Watch. I'm going to go to my center line, and I'm going to go up. What is that up part? Remember when I drew the house? That up part I just drew is that same point here that went up. Does that make sense? So now I'm going to pitch it right here and say I'm going to stop there. I'm going to draw a line through there. See how I just did that? And then I'm going to come back and take that line and put it right through the other side like that. Now I'm going to do the back side real quick. Okay. Well, I need to... This is further back in space, right? So I need to come back up here, recede this back a little bit. Back in this... See this direction right here of that line going there? I'm going to recede that line going back the same. I'm going to come up here and do the same thing. See that? Boom. With that hit right there now, I'm going to bring a line through there. And now watch. Here's the tricky part, though. There are two lines on top of each other almost. That line is going to go through that corner, and it's going to come that much. See, there's a small distance right there. Why? It's very thin because it's on the opposite side. So now let's say I decide to stop my fin right here. I'm going to bring a line from here to here. Right? I'm going to take that line. I'm going to carry that line back over like that. See how I just did that? And then where that hits... Gee, what shape is that, folks? That's the top of my roof of my house. Nothing's changed. I just drew the top of a roof of a house going from a center line. Same way before that I came here and I split this guy up. I, oops, doing it freehand. I split it up and I just found the center of a, the part of my roof. Okay. I just did the same thing right here. I just drew, drew a roof into the ship, but I had to find the center line of the ship. I had to have that understanding of to understand where the fins come out, right? So now this is going to come from here. Let's say my fin, now I could just pull it straight back, right? Let's say I wanted an angle on my fin. Let's say I wanted my fin to come back and angle like this a little bit, right? Are you ready? I just need to find the angle of that curve that's happening to match it to the other side. So I could draw my center line out. I bring that, happens to hit right there. And then I can bring that and hit that about right there. Okay, and that's going to give me an idea that if this was curving, it's going to sort of go at that particular angle. Now, it's a little bit harder because I'm not going to see part of this. So actually, you know what, let me back up there. I'm probably going to confuse the heck out of you. Let's say I decide to bring my fin like this and just curve it back like that instead. I just put a simple curve on it, okay? Now, I can come over here and put another line right here where I find where that point hits. See right there? Now I'm going to recede that point back this way. And where it hits right there is going to be the roundest part. Problem is I'm looking at my fin. Is it's going to come down and it's going to end right about here. And then it's going to start to curve back to that point. So I'm actually, my fin's going to come over here and it's going to end right about here. Okay, and I'm sort of at a weird angle where I'm just going to be able to see just a little bit on this other side. Okay, and the fin then curves back a little bit. It's going to, I'm not going to really be able to see it curve back, but I might see just a little bit of that underside where I had that line in there like that. And a lot of that's very foreshortened in there. But it doesn't matter. I have this fin that's here that's established right now. So that's it. So now, look at the structure that I have in my vehicle. Okay, let me see how much I drew. So there's my fins. Watch. Let me see if I can come back over here. There's there's my vehicle. Now, the rest of this is the fun part. It's the detail phase. Okay, so watch. It's me coming back in here and wrapping this with lines. So I already have a good feel of what's happening. What do I mean by wrapping it with lines? Well, let me show you. I what's what's the surface texture made out of? Is it made out of metal? Is it made out of part rubber? Is there a canopy to it? Is it a robot controlled? What exactly is taking place here, right? So watch. I can come over here off of the center now, and I can just start wrapping part of this and say, well, you know, what if I want to bring this forward like this? And let me sketch a little bit more. There we go. And remember, I have a center line there of the body of what it's doing. Now, that center line might be coming down too much, I could change some of that. I might decide to arc it, and I might decide to rearrange part of that center line and bring it a little bit more like this. Okay, I can control the change of what's happening there. I don't always, oops, I don't always need to have that red line 
was coming forward. So from a side view, it was probably more like this. It was coming and then sort of dropping very quickly like that. But now I might want to make something that's a little bit more sleek like that. Okay, so I'm just going to readjust this center line there a little bit. I'm just going to pull it back a teeny bit. And this is where I just start wrapping stuff. I might, this is where I start to sketching. I might say, okay, there's an eye here. Maybe there's an eye here, a larger eye here. Um, maybe there's a, let's throw a curve in here that overlaps part of the body. Okay, now what I like to do is this, is I did this on another layer. I like to thin down part of the underdrawing a little bit like this. Get a little bit thinner. And then I come back on this other drawing on top and I start to sketch out the drawing that's underneath. This is a way of doing sort of a nice line cleanup in here. Okay. Here we go. And now look, I want to throw some contour lines in here. I want to wrap, I want to indicate what's happening. If I wrap this shape, maybe this comes back down and sort of wraps over there. So now I'm going to understand exactly where that goes over on the other side. Okay, I might decide to come in here, wrap some other elements in here. These are just little bits of detail at this point that I'm going to start coming in and placing in to part of my design here. All right, and as I keep, I'm going to step back and I like to look at this. What I like to do is I like to come down and take off See, there's my underneath. Look, and there's part of my perspective detailing, leaving. Okay. See, and that's sort of my new ship shape that's there. Okay. So, I know I'm getting, I have too many boxes here. I have too many layers. I wanted to show you some of that progression and how I build up and work to something. So, even from here, there's nothing wrong with just finishing this as a dated, dedicated rough. I, now it's just detail, so I could look. If I come in here, let's just finish this up. Let's put some other detail. I might curve in here. Maybe there's some type of a shape that goes this way, that wraps over. Maybe this comes back in here a little bit, so I might have something like that that's sort of on the other side here that wraps back this way a little bit, comes forward. I might have another line. I like that idea of like a cockpit shape, so maybe this comes back in here what if I decide to I can see how the body's flowing right here what if I decide to put a little like a little thruster vent that's right in here Now I have to come over here and I have that center line. I have to figure out where my thruster vent's going to be over here. So I can take my ruler. I can see it's pretty much lined up about there, about right there. Now I could come over here. That's it. And I just keep sketching from this point, adding on more detail and de defining you know, I don't like having areas of open space. I like to do this thing that I call sort of segmented detail where I have an area of detail that gets very busy and then I want to have a little bit of space that compositionally allows some of that detail to breathe a little bit. That was weird. Hold on a second. That's weird. My other secondary monitor started. Oop. Hold on a minute. What's going on here? Hold on, guys. Starting for a minute. All right. Sorry there, guys. We just had to take a quick break. Um, I had to restart Sketchbook Pro because we had some problems. So the rest of what I'm doing now, these are just the little details that are going to tell me about. This is where, if we were getting more into art direction, we'd start thinking about. You know, where's my vehicle from? Is it, you know, what's the influence? Is it a society of people that live under the water on a futuristic planet? 
Is it from, you know, is this U.S. military Navy SEALs design that's coming out in 2021? What is it? And I might add, you know, little elements to it. So, I, I mean, some of that, the way I even put details in here, you know, if I wanted to keep working on this and making it feel uh, detailed, you know what? Hold on again. It did it again. Guys, hold on. Let me calibrate. See it? My pen's like, let's try again. All right, one second. Okay, sorry about that, guys. We're having some technical issues here, and now we're, we're back, and we should be good to go. Um, I had to just recalibrate the Cintiq real quick. Okay, so now it's just, you know, coming in here and carving out, you know, I like to think of it as carving out shapes and just putting details that might add, you know, some fun or flair to part of the design. You know, I don't know why I just did that weird curve. And I just keep doing that. I just keep moving across the vehicle. I keep defining a little bit more, pulling out shapes here and there, modifying everything. Look, I have a center line up there. I need to decide, maybe decide to put like a little bump. There's like a little fin here for some reason. Maybe it can, just like a stability. Maybe there's like a little light back here. And maybe I have an angled antenna sort of in the back here or something like this. Okay. And those all sort of fit together in the right place. And the rest of it's just continuing from here, having fun with it. Carving those shapes out and seeing what you end up with. I just need to go in there and adjust. I'm still having problems with the pen not working. It's slightly off here. It's getting annoying. But see what I'm getting at here? And if I look at that, I have something that's tangible. It's getting detail on it. I'm putting the little vents, little markings, everything. And from this point on, it's just an issue of detail. It's just going back in there, redefining it, and I'm done. That's it. It's just the, it's, remember I gave that metaphor about baking the cake, and it's just we're just putting the frosting on the cake right now, thinking about mapping contour lines. So what I'm going to do at the next, at our next meeting is I'm going to take one of your guys' ships, probably a couple of them, and I'm going to talk about pushing and pulling the shapes and adding detail on them, Okay. I went through the class today to quite a few people, and I was telling you guys, simplify, simplify, simplify. That's pretty simplified right here. I have like a cylinder with like a squashed front shape with a wing on it. That's it. But I have a, it, it's a pretty decent-looking shape for just starting, not doing any thumbnails. It's something to run off of. Simplify your shapes. No giant Viking ships. that You're going to create yourself. There's a whole world of pain and suffering there. Some of you guys aren't at that level yet. That's a lot of detail. Slow down. I know last year I had a, a student do like a giant T-Rex mobile. Uh-uh. Worst thing you could do. Like really a T-Rex? Uh-uh. No way. Too much. Simplify. Have fun. All right. See you guys in just a little bit.